and thank you so much for joining me here on So Stitch Hex. Today, da, 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 we're doing a review of the Prisma Visions Tarot Deck. It is one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. Even if it's just for a one card pull, that's fine. It is really cute. It's very Vincent Van Gogh. Um, it's very sturdy. I love it. All right, it's on the back. Da, da, da. You see the image of the eye in the very splatter paint pattern. It's like the Prisma Visions Tarot, a set of cards to ease your mind. 79 card decks illustrated by James R. Eads. And it's very beautiful. I'm going to do a walkthrough of all the cards because they lay out like a panorama and you can see all of this large image when you do the minor arcana. Now, my book is falling apart. Um, pages will jump out occasionally because my book has been through some things. Because for the major arcana, it gives you a it gives you a upright and a reversed. So the high priestess is the ruler of the subconscious where ideas are first conceived. Much like Persephone, she threads the surface of the underworld, brimming with insight, but biding, but biding her time. When the moment is right, she will burst into the sunshine, and with all she has learned below but for now her footsteps ripple the water in the light of the waning moon which calls for a quiet retreat of imagination and inner reflection counterbalancing the raw power of the magician the high priestess is the internal introspective side of creation she is the fertile subconscious where ideas are brought to life also considered the action is not always the best possible step. Sometimes it's best to reflect, amass strength, and consider your options before beginning anew. This is not an indication of cowardice, but of wisdom. And each uh, set does get the kind of reverse kind of idea in there. It's not expressly saying it's reversed, but it's kind of giving you what to what it is and it also gives you a full page for each card it does not show you the card in the book which does bug me but i understand so for each element like when you go to well when you start off at the beginning it has the like how to get to know your deck and doing a reading and it has a couple of the spreads which is really cute but when you go to like the start of the minors so, start of the minor for wands. It starts off with the magic of wands. With imagination hard at work, a fire rises from the earth. Element fire, season spring. Signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Next, you go to chalices. The ballad of chalices. So, the first was the magic of wands and then the ballad of chalices. Love, oh, I didn't read that part. The Magic of Wands has imagination, creation, passion, dedication. So it has it all laid out for you. The Ballad of Chalices says, love, emotion, intuition, in, inundation. Can't pronounce that, I'm sorry. A love letter left in your hand is better written down instead. In your head. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. A love letter written in your head is better written down instead which also rhymes, which is cute. Element water, seasons fall, signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. The song of swords, perception, affliction, suffering, sorrow. In the cold of the night, the beast of truth is inside. Element air, season, winter, signs, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. The rise of pentacles, wealth, possession, the material, success. Better to have half than to live without. There. Element, earth, season, summer, signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, in the house. <laughs> and then at the end, it's really cute. It says, and now you know. And then it has a little spot for you to take notes. It gives you a little bit about the two, so the artist and the author. And that is the book. There's a little more space if you wanted to take notes. 
But there you go. So I'm going to do a little walk through with the actual cards and I will see you in a moment. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Sosa Checks. You saw me just a moment ago. You will see me again. This is the Prisma Visions Tarot Deck. It is my absolute favorite. You can see the wear on the box because I carry this one with me all the time. I've had it for two years, I think. Might have had it for longer. Mine has the illumination uh, card. That's my, um, the edition that I have has the illumination card. Um, you can see some wear where it's uh, cut into the matte kind of finish on the cover. It's very uh, Vincent Van Gogh-esque. You open it, you see what I read earlier. You see the book, which has an eye closed on the back, an eye open on the front in this cool pattern. It's paperback. You can see a little bit of the wear from my use. It is black and white, all of it. It doesn't have an actual picture of the cards on the page, just the name, which are on the cards. There's not a string to get them out. So, um, so it has the name of the cards on the bottom. See, it has that very specific style. Um, but it does start off with the name of the deck. My book is falling apart, but it was a really high quality paperback. I've just used it to death. Um, it starts off with a black page to tell you what the section is. It starts off with one for the majors. And it starts off with one for the minors. And it is double-sided pages, all of them. And this is the illumination page. It gives you a little foreword that I will have read for you. And it gives you a couple spreads here. And it starts. I like the eye closed detail. The eye inside the box is also open, and you can see a little wear from my use, but it has held up really well, all things considering. Um, this is my absolute favorite deck. I use it constantly. It is my go-to um, for a tarot deck. So, here we go. All right. So, we have pentacles. I'm going to do two rows. As you can see, it connects, moving forward. You can see all of these. And they would connect the reverse way, so let me just switch everyone around. And how it all just flows together. And I love the use of like sunflower-esque kind of daisies. The use of strawberries. The imagery here. Okay, there's the pentacles. We're going to go through... Swords. You have the knight fighting the bird, and you have the large bird. You have the scene of the war going on here in the back.
Oops. They're very slick. I'm just going to make a second pile for dress swords because they are very slippery. There's a very glossy cardstock. Um, very thin, but it feels sturdy. Oops. Da -da -da. And there they have captured the bird together and lay victorious. And I love the butterflies here. All right, next we're going to see the chalices. We have the ace. And you see how these kind of go together as one very large scene. It's one very beautiful image and you can just follow it. And it is really fun to just play them out, lay them all together and just kind of look at them there. Go with. I do love this deck and they focus on like dancing that they have, the way they draw it. It's more ballet than anything else. Um, the lover's card is one of my favorite cards. You'll see it in a little bit. Da -da -da. You see how it flows and it goes through. And so each card individually is beautiful and does showcase what that individual tarot is supposed to be but together it creates a bigger meaning and it shows how the whole minor like um the the whole minor set fits together next you have the wands and like, I really enjoy looking at the big picture here. The wands is beautiful. Oh, I did it. I should have done this the all along. It cuts it off a little on this on this side, so I will move it up. But as you can see, it shows the forest and it shows so much like creative energy and the activity. There's so much art and there's just so much craziness going on. Like I love this, it makes me think of Beltane and then the flowers and everything. It's very beautiful. You feel very much the Vincent Van Gogh, like impressionism, post-impressionism, post-impressionism going on. Leaning toward the abstract here. It's so beautiful. And I did um, organize these beforehand so that we wouldn't be playing uh, 52 organization. Here was the king. You can see he's almost completely abstracted in his form. And we have... The four suits, that was the word I was looking for. Each ma minor uh, suit has a very distinct image, but it just plays so well together. All right, next is going to be the major. I'm gonna be putting them back in the box so you can see. They fit so perfectly. Um, I don't know if you noticed, they are gilded. Gilded in silver, which I think is absolutely beautiful. I prefer the silver to the overall uh, gold. So you have the mystery card, which is illumination. It is special because it is unique to this particular edition. And I also have a print that came with mine that I have on my wall. So you have the world. Judgment. The sun. The moon. The star. The tower, the devil, temperance, death, which I love death, it's so pretty. The hanged man, which is someone drowned, which I find really interesting. Although he's right there near the surface. Alternatively, it's like they're falling into the water. Sorry. Falling in. I really like that one. You have justice, 
You have the Wheel of Fortune with the peacock and the snakes. Very uh, Ouroboros-esque. You have the Hermit, which is just this beautiful lake, but a guy standing on the bridge. Strength is my favorite card because it's the dandelions. It is my absolute favorite because when I feel strong, I feel my most, like, badass. I feel like a lion. This card is just so perfect. You have the Chariot, which is a really cool card. Makes you think supernatural. The Lovers is my favorite way to view the Lovers card because I'm asexual and this is just perfect. It fits, even if I don't dance. The Hierophant, very astrological. You have the Emperor, kind of spooky. The Empress, very mystical. It makes me think of uh, the necromancer hippie girl from uh, American Horror Story. The High Priestess, she walks away, leaving the pomegranates, but I really like it, even though they're like not wearing much. The Magician is so spooky. This one is scary, but I love it. And the fool. And I find that bird to be so mean. <laughs> so the fact that this is the fool is hilarious to me. And all right. And then it all fits back in perfectly. The book fits in lovely. And that is that. I will see you in a moment. Ta da! Hello again. All right. I hope you loved the panorama of the cards. And I hope you liked the little walkthrough we did there. Um, so I think you can see why this deck is my absolute favorite how it's just so beautiful and so like drawn together how the suits fit together to make a large image which you can then interpret each card from individually if you didn't want to take it like as an individual card but as an individual suit and just see the overall image the book is so detailed with the descriptions and then the images themselves just evoke so much emotion and you can just really picture what it stands for like, personally, Strength and the Lover's Card are my two favorite cards. I am a big fan of the Majors. And you can always work with just the Majors. You don't have to use the Minors. But these are so beautiful. These Minors stand above and beyond others. Like, the panorama thing just blows my mind. Because it's like, this is together and it's together. Um, it does take up a bit of space when you lay it all the way out on the floor. But it is so worth it. All right. Let me know in the comments below if you have a different edition with a different little insert card, let me know. Um, if you have this deck and love it, let me know. If you don't, tell me why. Um, and if you do want it, I will leave a link in the description where you can find it. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Please like, subscribe, share if you can. And I hope you have a great 2021. Bye. <laughs>